for Future Fragrance is a game with erotic content, illustrations, and animation. The content of this game is not suitable for those under age. Juicy. Hey, thanks for checking out this public demo. Fragments. It's been a bit over a year since the last public demo was released. In that time, we've completed three full levels out of five and added a lot of new content and functionality to the game. This demo we are about to play has changed up the game a fair amount since the last public demo, so we'd recommend playing through the tutorial at the start of the game, as well as letting the instruction backstory movie play so you've got the context for what's going on. Additionally, try playing through the demo multiple times. Cutscenes and reactions to events will change based on your actions and choices you've made both in and out the, of the cutscene. As far as what's on the horizon, we're making good progress. We're a bit of ways into the fourth level, so with five levels in total within the game plus polish on the previous levels, we should be done with the game by the end of the year. Oh. That's all we ha really had to say though. We will let the game do the talking from here on out and if you'd like to support us, please check out our Patreon campaign at patreon.com forward slash future frag. Oh, just, just a heads up, I already played this and the recording was bad. Spell Kingdom 990 AD. Long ago, there were five kingdoms, each of them vying to become the strongest in the land. However, the Spell Kingdom, once a force to be reckoned with, was beginning to lose ground. Can I read first, please? Spell Kingdom 99580. During a particular harsh attack, Spell Kingdom and some. Can I, can I pause this like so I can read? Traveling sorcerer joined in the fray, wanting to help improvise kingdom. He quickly defeated an attackers to display overwhelming magic powers. Oh, damn. Grateful for his efforts in a time of need, the citizen pleaded with this sorcerer to guide their kingdom to victory in the war. Willing to take on the challenge of bringing the spell kingdom back to its former glory, he readily accepted and began training the citizens in his mag powerful magics. The new king realized though that some citizens had a natural affinity for his brand of magics and handpicked this promises candidates to receive training so that they could become part of the elite forces. After five years, the efforts of the new king were starting to pay off. The spell kingdom was on its way to becoming a worthy contender once again. Spell Kingdom 1080 the kingdom was still struggling, though it needed a trump card, something to absolutely crush any hope of the opposition against them. And then it came, during his yearly recruitment of new mages to his elite forces, the king stumbled upon two extremely gifted candidates. Oh. Faye and Talia, proclaimed by the king to have potential that only comes once in a century, were quickly given private training by the king himself daily. Rumors of the king having lost his mind or the king just playing favorites with the two pretty women abounded and the citizens started to lose their faith. Ah, Iburitz. However, after just six short months of training, the results of their training quieted and doubts about them. Upon the first appointment in battle, they effortlessly crushed the attacking single-handedly. The populace was awe. It was they were seeing an echo of the king's performance from five years ago. There was a celebration that night. The saviors were ensured a future for the citizens of the Spell Kingdom for a long, long time. Or so the citizens thought. Using his magic, the king foresaw his kingdom in ruins in just one year. The other kingdoms, threatened by Talia and Faye's power, were planning to band together to wipe out everything he governed over. Desperately sought out any solution, straining his magical power to its limits as he scoured the land and beyond for any hope. After many days locked away in his chambers, his efforts finally paid off. He had found the kingdom's trump card. This condom looking thing. <laughs> the king had located a powerful weapon in the year 3000 AD. With it, he could overpower any challengers, keeping his kingdom safe forever as the weapon is passed down. 
Any problem was that the weapon itself was fragmented into many pieces across the strange, dangerous future he had seen. This means that they would need to individually gather and assemble. The king couldn't simply teleport. So he informed Talia and Faye to the great threat of the kingdom, and that it was up to them to retrieve the parts of the device that would save them all. The king also gave them some extra incentive for succeeding on this mission. Whoever found the most pieces would become the second in command of the kingdom as a prize for their efforts. Stealing themselves, they trained into the challenge ahead of them for the next few months. More training. Then on the day of the year where the fabric of time and space was weakest, it's time for the two to depart. Entering the king's chambers, they saw him channeling every ounce of his magic, steadily holding open a portal through time and space. As the king wished them well, the two walked to the portal, and in an instant, they were gone. What the king didn't know, though, that was each of the women had their own motives for finding the weapons fragments. They wanted the weapon for herself to take over not only the spell kingdom, but all of the other warring kingdoms. Talia wanted the weapon to destroy it outright, feeling that there must be an alternative solution, as well as fearing the possibility of the weapon falling into enemy's hands. Unfortunately, as the duo stepped out of the portal, they quickly realized that the future they had traveled was definitely a threat as they had feared. Just not in the way they expected. Oh my god, the boobs. Early on in the game, you see the boobs. <laughs> So yeah, th th that's the intro. It was well written. It was very juicy. The last part was very good. I will start a new game because I don't want to spoil you guys. Let's do easy because I'm a club. I just need to show you everything. The voice acting in this game is amazing. And welcome to the public electric level demo for future fragments. To advance this text, press X. Uh, hi yourself. Who were you again? As you can see in the little speaker box there, my name's Vi. In the full game, you'll have known about me for a good two levels by this point, since the electric level is the third level in future fragments. Yeah, because, yeah, I forgot this is just a demo. Don't worry, though. I'm not here to annoy you all the time or anything. In fact, prior to this level, I'm barely interacting with you. And you've got no idea what my alliances or motives are. That's not important for now, though. What is important is that I'm here to give you an interactive tutorial of the basics of the game. Alright, so I want to ask, then... Oh, hold on! If you want to skip this entire tutorial and just go right to the gameplay, you can choose to do so in the upcoming choice box at the bottom of the, the screen. screen. <laughs> I, I love Vi. I suggest you do the tutorial though, even if you played the this mexy Russian game, woman. A lot of things have changed and been added. In the full game, you'll learn this stuff over time naturally. However, as we're three levels into the game, we need to get you up to speed and fast. So, do you wanna skip this? Nah, we're gonna do the tutorial. Great! I'm glad you're deciding to stick around. This won't take long, I promise. Okay? Then it took me the whole the hour to finish this. Anytime you see blue text like this, it means it's something very important. This usually is used for gameplay hints, or plot points to watch out for, but it could be used for other things too. It's also great. I wonder what other things text. that is like. Sounds good. Now, how do I move? I've been stuck standing here for what feels like forever. Yeah, oh, has this sass. Easy. So sassy. Just use the arrow keys but why doesn't give a shit? She's still sweet. <laughs> Holding the down key lets you crouch, which scrolls the camera down below you as well. And if you press jump while crouching, you can drop through floating platforms. Yeah, another thing that I noticed in this game that they do have an option for a controller, but the instructions that they give out within the game is just for a keyboard. I, I wish that they have an alternative or like additional information on how to navigate using a controller. 
I was like, tried playing this with the keyboard. It was hard. The controls. <laughs> you can press the escape key on your keyboard and use the arrow keys to navigate to the gear icon on the far right. Once you're there, you can press the Z key to select it and then move over to the control selection. You can plug in a controller too if you want to use that. I they, they did mention the plug in the controller, but never explain how to navigate. And graphics in these menus. If either one of those isn't to your liking. And how do I attack? I can't attack, right? Of course! Just jump up to that second block there and we'll talk about that more. Okay, I passed your big test and made it up here. Now what? See that guy down there? We call them grunts. Oh my god. They're the shock troops of the World Organization for the Regulation of the Masses. <laughs> The sworn enemies of the rebels, <laughs> which you and I are a part of. No, I'm affiliated with, with my, my kingdom, kingdom back in the year 1000. That's All this sass. In the year 3000 has nothing to do it's with not me. my business. Just get the fragments that my king ordered me to and get back home to save my kingdom. Sure, sure. Whatever you say. Anyways, back to how to fight enemies. You have three main attacks. First, there's your regular shot. You can use that by pressing X. Here, I'll take control of your body for a second to show you what it looks like. Not really enjoying being taken control of like that. <laughs> oh, relax! Silly. Getting back to it, you can relax. fire off as many Silly. shots as you want by hitting X rapidly. If you're moving, you'll fire slower than if you're standing still, though. So keep that in mind. Next, okay. there's the charge attack. You can perform that by holding down the X button until the charging animation shows. Mm -hmm. Then, depending on how long you hold it down, one of two attacks comes out. If you hold it for a short period of time, you'll fire off an attack that hits all enemies in its path. An AOE damage. If you hold it for at least three seconds, though, you'll get an elementally based attack based on the elements you've got selected in the upper left on your GUI. In this demo, you've got two available fire and ice. You get elemental abilities from both this, but that's irrelevant to this demo. You can change abilities at any time by using the A or S keys. And nope, I'm not I'm having, having any, any of the body control, control stuff, stuff again. again. <laughs> Plus, I've been sitting here for what feels like forever, so I'm gonna test this out myself, thanks. Oh, fine, go try and kill that grunt then. You can't drop to zero HP in this room, so don't worry about that. Great, hold on, I forgot one more important thing <laughs> about enemies. This is the juicy part. If you take too much damage in a short period of time, you'll you are stunned. You can mash on your attack <laughs> button to get out of the stun state. But if an yeah. enemy touches you during this time... Oh my god. If the enemy touches you while you're stunned, you get fucked. That's the rated 18 part of the story. Or uh, of the game. Well, he's <laughs> going to be pretty happy. And you're not. Unless you're enjoying yourself, of course. If you're on normal mode, you can break out of the animation by mashing attack, just like while in your stun state. If they bring you to orgasm though, you'll take even more damage due to exhaustion. If you're on easy mode, you'll take no damage, and you can end the animation when you want. That's all! Now go take that grunt out! Finally! Oh no, let's, let's, let's get some... Oh my god, can I? Yes. Please, stun me again. Yes, stun me again. Go near me, go near me. Yes, everyone. <laughs> Not finishing. Okay, time to kill you. Okay, now that 
Since you've done that, do you see that floating object in front of you? Yeah, that cup of milk. Yep. Power ups like this are all around the worm to Power see you in. What's so funny? Wait, you're serious? I think she is. Yes, I am. Power ups like this protein drink and others are extremely important. All right then, so how do I use them? Glad to see you're taking me serious. To pick up a power up, you just stand on top of it and press the up button. Then you'll be able to pick if you want to send it to storage by pressing X or if you want to equip it instantly by pressing Z. You can see what the power up does too by reading the text in the middle of the screen once it's been picked up. You can hold up to three power ups at a time and their effects stack. Storage, what's that? See this thing? That's called a save pad. Come walk over to it and I'll tell you more about what it does and what storage is. Get this up. Where's my milk? So I'm over here, now what? What you're looking at here is a save pad. Jumping on one saves a complete copy of your body and mind to that particular save pad. The world organization members use these quite often. They're a part of everyday life. And because of them, almost no one under their banner fears death anymore. Hold up, hold up. First, to make sure I'm understanding this, you're telling me this thing can just flawlessly recreate someone after so death with no issues every time? You're trying to explain how you respawn in games. Try to make it realistic with safe pads. Well, you'll notice I said almost. Safe pads can still malfunction. They can be hacked into and data tampered with, along with a host of other problems. But this kind of stuff almost never happens. There's also one more caveat. Any memories that a person's formed after saving at a save pad won't be reconstituted when they're respawned on it after death. For some reason though, you, Talia, seem to be able to retain your memories after respawning. I'm still investigating why that is, so I'll get back to you if I find anything out. Okay, that's not weird at all. So how do I use it then? You just jump onto the save pad and it'll save a copy of you to it. There's also one extra usage of it that you, and you alone, seem to have. Remember those power-ups I was talking about? And the whole storage thing? <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot entirely about that. So, what's storage then? Oh, sir, cat. If you grab power-ups while out exploring the gratification factory, and then manage to bring them back to the save pad without dying, you'll be able to save them into the memory of this save pad as well. To access your storage, you just need to stand on a save pad and press escape, and the power-up storage menu will automatically open. From there, you can mix and match any previous power-ups you've saved to your storage. So I'll have unlimited power-ups. Oh no, my, my controller died. What the heck? Run over to the save pad and try it out now, or just feel free to keep going forward to the next section of the tutorial. Don't worry, we're almost done with this. Just two more sections left in the main tutorial, and we'll be all done. Hmm. Game saved. How do I access the storage again? Oh no. Oh, that's how I... So, there's a power-up over there, but I don't quite think I can reach it. Got any advice on how I can make that jump, Vi? I do! You've got one more notable ability. Every time you defeat a boss, you gain a utility ability from that boss also. Since this is the third level, you've got two abilities currently. You can switch between them by pressing A and S, just like the powered up charge shot. But I'm using phone. a controller, why? We'll be focusing on the fire dash. You can get it up one bar of your mana though, which you can see in the upper left. 
Utility abilities have different amounts of mana they use, but your mana recharges at the same rate no matter what. All right. Talia, why do you look so angry? Are you ever going to tell me how to actually use this utility stuff? Uh, I'm really sorry. To use a utility Just trying to help Talia. Don't, you don't need to be a bitch about it. All oh, right, God. Thanks, bye. Anytime, sugar. Any? Uh, he calls you sugar. And now I'll explain the second utility ability at your di When you use this utility ability, you'll shoot a small projectile out. If it hits an enemy, it'll freeze them in time and space. Literally. While they're frozen, you'll be able to use them as a platform to jump on and reach other areas. Or to avoid enemy attacks, or simply to temporarily disable them. You can even freeze projectiles too! Be careful though, the freezing effect doesn't last forever. And it doesn't damage enemies either. So you probably want me to use it to get up to that ledge and get that power up then. You got it! See? You're getting the hang of this already! Ali is very... Very smart. Freeze! Nice work, Talia. Just walk through the corridor to your... So here we are. The last room of the tutorial. You've got two options from here. You can jump over this gap and continue on to your right, where I'll inform you of your core objective for this level and demo. Or, you can drop down in that pit in front of you, where you'll find out about some more gameplay mechanics and objectives. You'll even get to see me in person down there too! Either way, I did have one more suggestion for you. While I know a lot of people mute games of this, uh, <laughs> nature, we hope you leave this the audio on, nature. as a lot of work went into the voice acting, music, and sound effects for this game. And if you just want to hear the music or just the voices, you can set that up in the audio menu by pressing escape at any time. The choice is yours on where to go from here, though. Regardless, I'll see you over at the milk fusion chamber. Huh. So, do I want to explore down below a bit, get some more info, or do I want to just get going and figure out that stuff later? Also, milk fusion? Really? Let's go down. These things are data banks, right? Yup, there's two types. You can read more about what the differences are between them by going up to them and pressing the up key. For a quick brief though, data banks are normal computer terminals connected to a wealth of information within the worm. However, thanks to Sieber's attack a few months ago, the entire network was damaged, locking the computer to whatever the current entry was at the time. Silver databanks contain general information about the worm and the world around you. But gold databanks... Those contain information about Sieber. And given that my hubby was public enemy number one, they've quarantined them off so that no one can learn about him and possibly get influenced by his actions. So naturally, there's gonna be cool stuff in the gold databanks that I'd want to read about. Wait, did you call Sieber hubby? Like, your husband? Yep. Is there a problem with that? No, I'm just, uh, surprised. Anyways, gonna check these out then. And the lab lips, the lab lips. Given how much the worm wants to arrest me, though, for my ties to Sieber and the rebels, I can't just show up like this willy nilly. Oh, oh, oh. Most of the time, I'll be yes, like, you from afar like a big a future. Big, big future. Sure you've gotten used to by now. If I can manage to block out their senses <laughs> in an area, though, I'll come see you in person. <laughs> You know you sound like one of those perverted worm jerks when you talk like that, right? Oh, you wound me. I've got two things to bring up to you, though, while you're here. Remember 
that little plaque up here? These will be at the entrances and exits of each map, and the letters and numbers on them are for the map you're about to go into. The maps out there, though, usually go by something like, say, P4M2, which would mean Path 4 Map 2, for instance. Given what I've seen in the two previous I can listen areas, to Vi for like even all day. Here every day I read my audiobooks. There's one other thing too. When you get out of this conversation with me, look at the upper right of your screen. There's a mini map up there. It gets filled out once you've been in a room once. For even more info, you can press escape to open the I can't help myself by pressing X, I just wanna... <laughs> I've already, see how many fragments already and went through found, this. As well as paths that you've hacked. Wow, that's actually pretty helpful. I've still got one more question though. How the heck do I get out of this pit? <laughs> oh, just go over there to your right, and I'll explain the core mechanic of this gravitation, gratification factory. factory. Gravity reversal. Gravity reversal. Okay then. Yep, see you in a second. <laughs> I'm glad you came down here, because now I get to explain to you the main mechanic of the gratification factory. Each portion of the worm facility you're in has a few unique mechanics, all centered around a core mechanic. The lava caverns had air vents, the Silod's medical base had a destructible environment, and the gratification factory... Well, do you see that switch over there? If you go over to it and press up... Just wanna you shoot it, show you guys what happened to me with the spider bot. gravity not only for you, but for all of your enemies and even some projectiles too. Go try it out! There we go! What's it like being upside? It's kind of disorienting, but I think I'm getting used to it. There is just one problem. I can't reach the switch anymore. So how am I going to get back down on the ground once I get back up there? Oh, that's easy. See this switch up here? Just jump over the wall to your left, go up there and hit it, and you'll be back down easy as pie. Kind of embarrassing that I didn't notice that earlier, but that seems easy enough. Mm -hmm. <laughs> easy peasy lemon squeezy. Okay, what's this huge thing? This is a milk fusion chamber, and helping me shut these down is your first objective in the gratification factory. They're fueled by the siphoned milk from the messes of female rebels they've captured from raids. As well as disobedient female worm members. I don't think I've ever actually seen you angry. That's like this. Wow. disturbing. So what are they these, get milk uh, from the women the that they capture? Used for, then? They're used to power a lot of different things here, unfortunately. What we'll be targeting, though, are the specific ones that are powering the firewall for the mainframe computer, since destroying it is your second and main objective. The mainframe computer controls not only the gratification factory, but large portions of this entire facility. You already crippled the lava cavern. And why do you think I'll do this for you? Well, I've got intel on where you can get two more fragments in the untamed forest past this facility. The uncharted wildwoods. And you can't get there without destroying the mainframe computer, as it's manifesting a force field separating uh, this facility from the vial. The force fields. Okay, but how do you figure I'm even going to be able to put a dent in it? This is year 3000 technology. What's my magic going to do against it? Well, for whatever reason, your magic was able to defeat the technology of the Selad's Emperor that was centuries beyond what even the worm's finest are capable of. That means it must be able to destroy the mainframe computer. Well, I do need those fragments, so I guess giving it a shot is worth it, especially if it sticks a thorn in the side of these worm jerks. So, how do I help you disable the firewall that these milk chambers are fueling then? Milk chambers. Simple. Drink the milk. of them in this gratification factory. One is at the end of each path you can take. 
When you reach one of these, clear out the room of enemies so it's safe for me to teleport there. Then just walk over to the milk fusion chamber, I'll teleport in, quickly hack and disable the device, and we'll teleport back out to the safety of the hub. What's the hub? It's an area we've secured within the factory, safe from worm eyes, with a convenient back door into the mainframe once we've disabled the firewall. And it's just up ahead. Speaking of that back door, once you've helped me disable all six milk fusion chambers, I'll be able to port you through that back door into the mainframe computer itself to take it down. Any question? No. I'm good. Really? You're not wondering what that prompt was? Just No, you already showed me one of those prompts back when we first started this tutorial. Oh, that's right. Well, those choices aren't just for tutorials. They're a significant <laughs> part of actual gameplay, too. You're going to just tell me about cutscenes anyways, aren't you? Yep, because it's important. Quite a few cutscenes will present you with multiple choices. And these choices not only impact the current cutscene you're in, but some future cutscenes too. In fact, some databanks, once read, will actually affect some cutscenes too. The order in which you encounter cutscenes affects things too. And in some cases, enemies being alive or dead can change up cutscenes as well. So, do I get anything then for making the right choices? There's no right or wrong choices. But in the full game, every choice you make will add or subtract from one of seven personality values. Come end game, whichever you have the most points in, that's what ending you'll get, along with one other more. Will there be like a good ending? A true ending, bad ending, and shit? And that's it! Good job in making it through the tutorial! Feel free to run through that corridor to the right and start the game. All right. So this is the ending of the tutorial, but when I first played it, I thought. But so, she. Uh, did you tell Faye about any of this? Now why would I tell my favorite girl's rival? I might about play up until the the spider bots, just for I you guys to see. To like you yet, I. Right? We've spent enough time talking, though, so I'm off. But thanks again for showing me all this, Vi. Oh, any time, huh? I'm trying to decide whether to show it to you guys or I'll just do it on the next episode. Maybe I spoke too soon. Ah. Tutorial is done. Tutorial is done. Okay, let's 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 save. Let's, let's look for the spider bots. Oh, there we 
go. I mean, let me start your box. We're almost done, we're almost done. The quality of the voice acting though. Am I almost dead? Yeah. Feel me. Oh, I'll just take find someone else's damage. Some more damage. Some more damage. Come on, a little more, a little more. Okay, let's go. Go, fighter box. Take me. Oh no, I killed one of them. There we go. How the heck am I even going to get out of this? There's three this of these things trapped in here. I can't again. even move my arms because of the walls. Uh, you wouldn't see the whole thing though. You wouldn't see the whole thing. Not to mention how hard it is to breathe. It's really freaking humid up here. Foreign object foreign still object. obstructing recharge routine. Hey, I'm not a foreign object. Okay, well, 
Yeah, I sort of am, but how come you robots can't figure out what oh, I am? Oh, guys. Uh -oh. Confirmed. Objects cannot be identified within local database. Obstacle seems to share 90% DNA with female humanoids, but is decidedly different. So, just because I'm not in the database, I'm not a person? Wait, 90%? Did humanity really change that much in just 2,000 years? I wonder what's different. Hold on. This isn't the time to be thinking about that. Suggestion. Initiate rapid pulling of the obstacle until more information can be acquired. Agreed. Agreed. Oh no. I can already tell what that means. <laughs> Object seems to be made out of a soft material. Since value of object is unknown, dispense lubricant so as to not cause any damage to object. Performing action. Performing action. Uh, these bots can't see me, so they really must not know who or what I am. I figure they're using robot speech to talk to one another, too, since they think there is no humans around, either. Ugh, oh, this loop just feels way too good because of the heat. Uh, are they actually getting hotter? Like, actually physically hotter? I don't know. Confirm identity of blockage still. Increased search area radius. Gyrations increased. Gyrations increased. Whoa, they're gyrating now. Why didn't they ever do this before? And it feels... Really? Circuitry at maximum heat. Initiating temporary shutdown in venting heat and fluid. Mirroring command. Link closing. Mirroring command. Link closing. <laughs> did they. Did they shut down? I guess they did. Aaliyah twisted a scrum her way out of the thicket way grass with the firebots using the lubricant and they're now retracted just once out of the crawl space she quickly switched from them again and they swallow her hearing to respond to his all right so that's it um the voice acting like aside from the controller thing which is Probably it's just me. Voice acting is good. It's so good. The art, good. The graphics wise, it's very, it's very nostalgic. The side scroller, and the fact that it's an indie indie game amazes me. Then heck, there's a lot of sex in this game. It's a game where. Sometimes you just gotta lose, you just gotta die, you just gotta take that damage. So I might be playing more of this, but as for now, that is it. My name is Little Kitty Mimi, and this is Future Fragments. Um, I'll put a link in the description with for their Patreon and other good stuff. So I'll see you again next video. Okay, bye bye. Oh my fucking oh. <laughs> ah. Ha <laughs> ha